Hi, everybody. Morning, evening, afternoon to everybody. I think this is truly our most global meeting that we have like in terms of like encompassing the globe. So um, so it's nice to have everybody here. Minutes are in the chat. Oh, here is the metrics model meeting. So um, I'll share my screen. So a few things um, today. Um, one, if Sean can't join, we'll just we'll kind of defer to a, a little bit later. But um, Yui, you're the first. Do you want to tell us how the Compass Lab release went? I think that was earlier this week. Is that right? Uh, actually, the last week. Last last week, we officially released the Compass Lab, and uh, we make a live demo. Uh, on 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 Thursday or on Wednesday, I quite quite remember that but anyway it's uh, it's released in last week actually the week before the last week i have made a, a very short demo uh, in our meeting uh, uh, using the prototype uh, environment and uh, today I, I would like to quick go through uh, the whole lab functions uh, and uh, to let you know how is it going on and uh, and by the way we also provide a, a, a blog um, a written for uh, intro introduce this Compass Lab, uh, written by by Ran Zhou, uh, our Compass Community Manager. Yeah. I love the uses of emojis as punctuation. <laughs> yeah. So was there something you wanted to share as well, Yehui? Did you want to share your screen or? Uh, maybe I can go uh, quickly go through the comment oh. slide. Yeah. I thought okay. I was looking at Yehui's screen, so. No, this is my screen. <laughs> so, all right, hold on just a second. All right, Yehui, you should be able to share your screen. Yeah, I, I can quickly share my screen. And... Uh, Yep, we can see it. Yeah. And here's the live. And actually, someone has made a, a metric uh, a, a live for that. Uh, also, my colleague made a, made a demo for Start Project Chaos. And that's the metric created by ourselves, by, 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 by Chaos. John? Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, we have uh, several entry points. You can use this create a model or create a model now uh, to create a new model. And uh, you can you can uh, enter a model name here to uh, select selecting into one of the dimension. Uh, maybe here it's a um, mm, uh, test, kill test. And uh, this is uh, a general uh, general uh, model, or it's a specific for one uh, in industries or fields. Uh, you can choose that. Uh, so uh, the default one is a common model, but whatever, because some some uh, some metric model only available or suitable for for one specific uh, technical fields. Uh, you can you can click here. And uh, and choose public or non-public means uh, if you would like to share the, the creation of the pro, uh, the model's progress uh, with everyone to, to share it uh, under this lab, then everyone could uh, could see the pro how it's going on and everyone could join this uh, discussion or you wanna create it uh, by yourself and collaborate with your members. Uh, being uh, except for yourself and and your collaborators, uh, any other ones could could not see the creation of the, the models, and then um, you can you can pick up any of the models, under uh, you can pick up the uh, the data site. Uh, you would like to tr create the uh, the models on on several data sites. You if you would like to choose. For example, the big data, we have several ones on the blockchain, whatever, and confirm that. And uh, it will tell you, okay, you, you pick up the two 
uh, technical fields, why it's big, uh, why it's for big data, why it's for digital currency, and which um, in each of single fields, it can includes two uh, data sites. I mean, the two, uh, the different uh, repositories as your data site. And then you can add your, your matrix model. And, and uh, we have 35 different uh, uh, categories, gate related, issue related, peer, poor requests related and repositories and contributor related. Uh, from some of the, uh, the uh, metrics, because we, if we have a, a very clear definitions, uh, it's powered by chaos, we will add it light. Oh. Yeah. And some of them haven't uh, added, haven't been added to, 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 to chaos, then we will not and showing we, that. But yeah, anyway, we did not invent time. So yeah. So <laughs> anyway, so uh, I hope I hope finally we can add all the metrics marked with the power by chaos. Finally. So after you pick up the whole the metrics uh, and this size, you can define the weights and threshold for the each of single metric. So here, the default weight for the each of single metric is a uh, is just the average the weight of the sing and single equal weight you, across them. Yeah. Yeah, but you can you can adjust that as you wish. Also, you can use some different other algorithm to 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 uh, to calculate the weight as you wish. And this, this threshold. Does yeah. the threshold imply a point of? Uh, have like a like a safe range, like a range you're happy within with for that metric, basically. Uh, basically, it's a it's a threshold coming from the like mm -hmm. uh, more than uh, twenty to thirty thousand uh, repositories. Okay. Already, uh, we 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 have in com compass, and we uh, observe the value range between those uh, repositories. We think we give a a. a something like a reasonable values yeah. for most of the, uh, the, the metric. But uh, of course, if you think the threshold or maximum values is too high or too, lo too, too low, you can tell us, you can, uh, we can, we can draw that. But anyway, you can, uh, as before, you can use the default one, but uh, you, currently you can, you can set as you. So, so those are those would be literal thresholds, like um, yeah. either they're literal, they're literal numbers. It's not a scale. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 After after the weight and threshold definition done, and uh, we pick up the algorithm selections, which means we use the, all the metrics to calculate the final result. And uh, I I showed uh, the algorithm we use. It's uh, derived from the raw pack. And, uh, and he he before he's retired, he working in at Google for more than twenty years. And before he working in Google, he working in Bell libraries for many years. So mm. he invent this algorithm. And we also uh, uh, announced that it's an in initially employed by OSS Credit Analytical School. And um, yeah, and we make some slight of uh, improvement. Uh, for this algorithm to make them more uh, time time range suitable because mm -hmm. currently it's just a one shot uh, uh, point time shot point point time yes yeah. exactly so here we explain the whole uh, algorithm and each of single parameters meaning uh, yep s means matrix values t means threshold alpha means weight so this is our de default algorithm but uh, yeah, if you have any more ideas about algorithm, you can you can just uh, tell us what's your ideas. We can implement a new one for for everyone. Yeah, after after we uh, have understand uh, the term of use, and uh, we click the C one. Yeah, then this one will show up here, uh, chaos test, mm. and uh, and this the it it has a default version number, which, which is zero, zero, one. And if yeah. you want to click on one more version for that, it's new versions. Uh, the default name will not change. 
uh, the, if it's a public or not public, we are not changed, but you can, you can give it's a specific new version number and select the different data size and different uh, metric for this new version. Anyway, and upon this new, um, uh, uh, the, the, the new metric model, you can trigger the, the analysis. After you trigger the analysis, yeah, the last time triggers unsubmitted. Yeah, I can confirm that. So it's a start analyzing. And after you, 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 after it, it may take some time anyway. So we can check the, the one we have complete the, the analysis. We can see the view report. And uh, you can see that we have already the several uh, data sites for this start project health metrics model. You can you can click up what anyone uh, anyone thing. For for example, I click uh, and next this one, yep. And uh, and uh, if you notice that we have discussion here. And you want to discuss around this metrics model, or you want to discuss one of this each of single metric, you can click here, discuss, and uh, it will be showing here. You can you can share your your ideas about the, how to create this metrics model. Uh, add your comments. Yep. Is the and, uh, is the intention to be adding comments about this metric or metric model for the repository I'm looking at, or more generally from a design perspective? For the design perspective, it's more like we may create a new metrics model definition or metrics def definition on the Google Doc. Yeah, uh, you okay. can give comments. Uh, of oh. course, mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. And uh, and uh, yeah, here my models. Uh, if you notice here, um, members, uh, I just mentioned I'm the creator of this new metrics model, um, but I would like to uh, collaborate with other guys. Uh, for example, from you, Shins, I, I, I would like to invite you to collaborate yeah. with me. Oh. Uh, and uh, and uh, I will give you some access right. The default oh. one is uh, just a blockable. No matter I public or non-public, if I mm -hmm. invite you as a collaborator, you accept that. You you can you can see the uh, this model under your your models this this here, okay. And you can also give you the access right to trigger the, the analysis. So whenever you add a new metric or whenever you change another new data site, you can change. You can you can trigger this metrics model or you can modify the metrics model, which means you can add either one more or, or delete some metric from this matrix model, or you can yeah, do some is, other configurations. Yeah. Is, is the underlying intention then that the data sets exist and people can access them and I can create a matrix model from yeah. any data set? Yeah, exactly. Because we have more than 20,000 uh, data sites here. You can add any one of that. So the, the how do you make, invite the collaborator, you just email the multiple uh, email address, if you yeah. like, with commas separately. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's the generally the, uh, the, the quick demo for, for all the uh, for all the functions, as far as I can see. And, um, and my colleague, Lan Zhou, just uh, give us uh, a blog we prepare to post it on on the uh, on our, uh, on 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 compass of course and uh, i would like to um, you know make a post on, on our case our chaos community also so if you think uh, there's something need to modify or, or update you can you can help us to change that if you like and uh, who can who can use this compass lab as i mentioned uh, in the last meeting everyone from our chaos community are welcome to, to use this lab because that's the my initial intention to help our members from chaos to quickly create a new matrix model and uh, and uh, create this collaboration process with everyone in, in the community yeah that uh, 
basic demo for, for Compass Lab. I can stop sharing. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, th I, think, I think I have a few comments. So every time I think it can't get cooler, <laughs> you do another presentation and I'm kind of blown away. So um, yeah, that's pretty amazing. So thanks for sharing that, Yuhui. Yeah. Um, so uh, the blog post I can connect with Elizabeth, and I don't. I think you know posting that on KS isn't is, isn't an issue at all. So, um, so I'll take a look at that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So it, it like raises a couple questions for me. Um, so this is it's interesting because we have metric model definitions that we are publishing as part of chaos. And this is metric models that are just kind of emergent that people would like to, to see. So is there any, um, is there any thought about kind of trying to see the things that people put together regularly? Like it may not be worth articulating a single metric model that somebody just randomly puts together, but it might be interesting to know if, 20 different people are kind of putting together the same metric model over and over, you know, there's, there's overlap between say like what Don put together and what I would put together and what Sean would put together. Mm -hmm. Just as something yeah. people yeah. continue to ask. At, at this phase, I haven't uh, make too much concern or, 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 or right. worry uh, about this point because I pray for more people to make more metrics model yeah. you know coming from our chaos community to let people realize that it's helpful for them so later maybe like you mentioned there are some cases happened so many people made the similar metrics models then in chaos we should make decision which one is better we recommend to 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 describe the similar use case that that's the thing our chaos should do in mm -hmm. Commerce Lab, we're just doing the engineering thing to yeah. help people get together. Yeah, for sure. But this is yeah. it's an interesting way to because normally our metrics or metrics models are always produced kind of um not always, but they're often produced via these types of meetings by people bringing ideas together. And this would just be a different way to kind of identify what those those metric models could be. So that's super interesting. Um yeah. yeah. And also, we are thinking that we do provide some some uh, convenient way to help people to to create the new metrics model. But there are still uh, some group of people, like people from university, from research uh, center. They would like to use the data directly. So that's also what I'm thinking to provide through the REST API from from Compass. So except for this metrics model and the metrics we already have, I mean, the data behind this metrics and metrics model. We also have many other enriched data. So we would like to provide this REST API to all the people from Chaos. So if you want doing more data process analysis, maybe you know for, for Augur to process some data to generate the new visualizations, that's super fun. We can provide that REST API list and help people to do so. Yeah, we have actually, we need, uh, there is a question too from Anita, but we have, we've talked about that as well, about providing data um, to sure. academics in particular, who mm -hmm. may want the, to take yep. a look at that data. Cause you're right. A lot of them don't just want to use the UI that you were showing, but they want access to the data so they can manipulate it. Um, we probably, I don't know how academics are in China, but at least in the U S academics can, it can be kind of a one-sided relationship <laughs> where <laughs> academics will simply take the data without much intention of contributing back. And if there's a problem with the data, they'll just push the problem to you. Yeah. So we might want to think just about what that relationship But I agree, providing the data is a cool step, but we might want to think about how we do that. Yeah, uh, you, know, you know, we already provide some data to some universities in China, of course, without any data privacy concern, because we use the anonymous 
uh, some technical thing to remove all the uh, personal information. Yeah. Provide such data to to the university. They already, you know, to publish some paper, mm -hmm. uh, on some meetings. So I think that's why it's working. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, Anita had asked, is there a possibility to add metrics subsequently, assuming a team wants a particular metric that is not already listed? I mean, I mean, all the metrics first they should should have a definition in chaos. That's the preferred one. And uh, you can nominate that from like from common working group that I would like to say that through the chaos or through the auger, whatever. And um, you can tell us, we can implement this metrics quickly for you. It's uh, because actually I, as far as I can see all the data, I mean, all kinds of different kinds of data uh, for the, uh, I mean, exists on the GitHub and uh, any and other code many management uh, platform like Getty, uh, all data we already have. So you just tell us if this metric is uh, related to some data on the GitHub, we can quickly provide the, this one, yeah. Does that help, Anita? Yes, that helps, thank you. You bet. Um, I'm curious, like, Don or Arthur, <coughs> Zoo, I'm just kind of your impressions of what you're seeing today. Yeah, uh, I kind of echo what you think. I every time I see it, I think it's really pretty, pretty amazing. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy to see some of this customization in in Compass now. Yeah, I think just think it's really pretty cool. Right on. Um, yeah, right. Usually, what was the what was the reaction? Um, when you were doing the introduction uh, last week, do you have a sense of kind of what people's reception is when you were presenting it? I assume you were in China when you were presenting it, that that was where the audience was. And uh, Actually, we made a live demo and everybody's uh, watching it through um, uh, 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 some different channels uh, in China. Uh, I can see some feedback that uh, I would like to, uh, you know, take a try on some specific tech, technical areas that forced the common bike. And also, uh, they also mentioned that if if I can access the data directly through the API. Okay. Because, yeah, that make me more flexibly create a new metrics model. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Did you get a sense of companies that were interested in, in this interface? Yeah. Not they, by uh, name, but that there was a... Some, a some companies already ask us to provide such uh, uh, capabilities of Compass Lab uh, for, for the, I mean, as a, as a role of OSPO. And uh, also there are some companies to uh, do some uh, software se security tools. So they would like to add such metrics model as a part of this analysis re report. I mean, the security analysis report to as a complementary information. Gotcha. So like a, a security report that would be supplemented by yeah. the data compass, coming out of Compass. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, this is, of course, super interesting. And um, we'd like, I personally, thanks for kind of, you mm -hmm. know, bringing the chaos metrics and metrics models forward. Uh, I think that's just great from a visibility perspective as well. Okay, cool. Anything else for you, Hui? Uh, not for me, for this okay. topic. Okay. Sean, I don't know if you had No, I, I mean, just it's incredible. Throughout, but... <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, I would like to play with it for sure on several levels. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to access Rust API, just tell me. I can I can give you directly. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, enter that button to access the Rust API. We do nice. have that one. Yeah. yeah, I'm not. We're we're not really front end people over here, but that's awesome. <laughs> all right, cool. Uh, all right, well, we'll kind of go back here. Um, the next thing on the agenda was the uh, OSS 
EU chaos meeting? Do we have, maybe this is right back to you, Yui, because I think that. Uh, yeah, I just uh, want to check with you guys, uh, especially from Elizabeth. Uh, yeah, do we have uh, any uh, schedule for that? Because we could, I, I, I'm pretty sure we can provide the two hours, uh, let's sessions meeting room uh, on, on September 21st. And uh, so how many people from our chaos could join? And what kind of topics uh, we can we can discuss? Do you have such such an agenda already? No, nope. um, brought it up in the community meeting, and I think we have maybe three three folks from Chaos that'll be there. So uh -huh. just kind of threw it out there that we have the space available, and there were a few ideas, but nothing confirmed. So it's still whatever we want to do. Mm -hmm. And I think there there are more people probably from the Chaos community that might come that aren't in the weekly meeting. So I was I got a yeah. Slack message from uh, Daniel Izquierdo. He said that he thought he would come. Yeah, yeah. So That's I think maybe if we look down through like the speakers, I think that we'll see some other names of sort of chaos folks like Ryan Prime Prophet, for example, has a talk there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, do we have some uh, any any uh, topics already? You know, uh, decide to, to 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 talk or discuss. I think that that would be great. Uh, because I, I I have um I need to feedback give some feedback to to my company to say okay we have uh, uh, some people to join this session and uh, several topics we we plan to do but uh, but uh, I mean the details of the topics it's uh, it's whatever we want to do it's totally open. Don, I didn't know if you wanted to take that time to um, talk about how people are using. Chaos metrics and kind of your survey in person. Um, I don't know if that's the kind of crowd that would come to a session like that, or if that's what you want to use some of the time for, but it might be available to you. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think um, Daniel was talking about maybe having sort of a workshop on open source health as part of that room. But um, he said he kind of, I think he talked to you, Yuhui, about it or got a message from you. So I think uh, we could yeah. we could do something like that, for mm -hmm. example. I'm not sure how many. I mean, we might want to recruit people to attend. Mm -hmm. Will this go on the uh, OSSEU schedule, uh, like published schedule on their website, or is this just kind of blocked off for us on the side? Uh, they do publish their schedules. For the three day sessions, I can share. So we would also have to let OSSEU folks know what we're talking about, so they can put that on their schedule. Um, I th I think uh, it it's not needed actually. Okay. Uh, because th this room is available for for the uh uh. Uh, government uh, sponsors like Open Ruler, Open Ruler, so they can decide who would use this meeting room. So as I mean, uh, mentioned, uh, so we have two hours uh, sessions available for for chaos. We, we can use to discuss and advise anyone from from chaos or from outside of chaos, whatever. They are they are all welcome. But I think if it's not on the schedule, if it's just a meeting room, people might not know about what we're planning to do there. Okay, so we have two hours. Do we know when it is? Uh, after the one of 21st. Okay. What is that? Uh, schedule in front of me. Is that like... I, uh, 2 p.m. to, to 4 p.m. Uh, to 4 p.m. Okay. And is the 21st a day of the September? No, but like, is it a day of the conference or is it a day before? I don't remember. Like, it's the last day of the conference. Okay. It's a pretty light day. I was looking at the uh, schedule for okay. OSSEU and there's not a ton of stuff on Thursday afternoon. Okay. So the, the event is still going on on the 21st. Okay. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Um, so, I mean, given two hours, we do have 
a lot of, we do have a lot of success with respect to kind of asking people to um, work together and report back. We've done that mm -hmm. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So um, I think what has worked well in the past is we have somebody give just kind of a, like a 15 minute talk or a 10 minute talk or five minute talk, like just to kind of, here's the topic. Let me talk a little bit about it just to kind of help locate people. Um, and then ask people to kind of speak about whatever that issue is in their own particular context and report back. Um, we usually do get really good feedback uh, in terms of things that we might want to be paying attention to in the chaos project. So that would be really helpful, I think, to me and to Elizabeth. Um, one of the things we could do uh, with Don being there is something around, you know, data science. What are the really the complex questions that you're trying to answer? Not that that would necessarily be everything that we would do with data science, but it might give us some orientation on how we want to think about it. Um, just one thought. Another would be like software accessibility. Like wh what do we need from a software perspective? So this is also kind of lined up a little bit with your survey done, not that you would give that talk, but like what are the needs that people have around software and what are the challenges that they're facing at the moment? Um, that could be another kind of prompt that could, could help people. So those are just a few ideas that I have, but the workshop approach does, does work pretty well, at least for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I have to admit, since I'm, since I'm out starting on Friday, and I'm out all next week, and then I'm back on the 12th, um, because I'll be on holiday, I don't, like, I don't know that I have time to prepare to help facilitate it. Maybe we need to make sure that we have someone who's, who's ready sure. and willing to facilitate the, the group, just somebody who can spend some more time on it over the next couple of weeks. Sure. Um... I don't know, is, is Georg going to be there? I don't know. I'll I can ping him and ask because he's usually pretty amenable to leading sessions like that. Yeah, he's pretty good at it. Yep. Um, or if, or if you said Daniel already had some ideas about doing just open source health, um, would do you think Daniel would be willing to do any of that? I'm not sure what he meant by workshop. I don't know if he meant okay. like present a workshop yeah. or do something facilitated like what we're talking. Okay. Yeah. Daniel certainly has a lot in his wheelhouse he could bring. So, do you, do you all know if he ever is he? I know he's in our Slack, but do you know if he actively checks it? Because I can message him too, but I just I didn't know if he ever had time to even check Slack. He does. The challenge is that he's also on vacation right now. I think he's coming back in a few days, maybe or next week. Yeah, as far as I know, yeah, I think he, he comes back as you're vacation. going out. Mm -hmm. um, we could also ask, you know, you know, more um, specific questions. These are all pretty broad. If we, can, assuming we can find a facilitator and kind of put together an agenda, and I'm happy to work on that. Um, but they could be more specific, like. Um, Uh, you know, like how, how do you support a global open source community? Like what are the things that you think about when, mm -hmm. as an example, like it's a little bit more specific than just kind of software challenges or mm -hmm. community health challenges um, or um, I, let's see what else could go. And do we think that we'll also have a bunch of people from open open Euler who aren't necessarily involved in the chaos project at this meeting mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I think uh, some people would uh, would like to show some best practice getting from the open Euler about their community. Uh, I mean, the chaos evaluation things like uh, they actually they have almost um, 100 uh, sick teams. Uh, I mean, the special interesting groups in this in these communities so they they are using our chaos communities to to monitor all the sick uh status for for them 
and they have a global di dashboard to show up all the contributions from the different uh, uh, organizations and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, individual uh, pers uh, contributions. Uh, and uh, you can quickly find who made contribution in the last uh, six months or one year. I think they would like to share that one. Send from the you know a community best practice. So that that would be great. One of the do you think there would be an opportunity to speak to um, like a couple of questions that I hear consistently, which is like how do you um, how do you effectively manage and maybe manage isn't the word, but um, like effectively manage dashboards. So I, I hear a lot about people saying that they just have information overload from dashboards. So like, how do you as a community, like think through that so that the dashboards are meaningful to you without overwhelming you? I'd, I'd really love to hear about that. And then assuming you can get past that issue, like what do you do with the data that you understand from the dashboard? Like, where does that go? Like, does it go into that person simply taking actions? Does it go into say like what you're talking about, like a security report that gets pushed up somewhere else in an organization? I would love to know a little bit about the directionality of where that information goes and anybody who could speak to that would be really, that'd be really interesting to me. I'd be interested, yeah, I'd be interested in that too. I mean, I'm, I'm I, yeah, I just, I'm very interested in all of it. So too much at the buffet. But I'm thinking if folks from the Open Euler community could talk about the global dashboards that they do have, yeah, and speak a little because if they are, it is their the room, and it's very nice of them to to mm -hmm. to invite us to be part of that conversation. That we could talk about maybe the dash, or they could talk about maybe the dashboard. This could be the prompt that they could talk about the dashboards that are available to them or the dashboards that they use. Um, mm -hmm. They could speak to kind of the design of these dashboards and how they are important for them without being too much information, but being just the right amount of information, kind of that balance that they're able to strike. Um, oops. Okay, I spell amount of information. And then where, how do they, you know, how do they use that dashboard data. Like, where does it go next other than just, you know, in, in your brain? Like, where, where do you take that data to, to make data-driven decisions? And how do those decisions get made? Because um, I think that would be an interesting prompt because I think there are, there, there would be potential, and we could, then um, as we say, like kind of announce this or you know recruit people to attend. So I think there would be a number of people in the audience who could speak to this as well. Yeah, for sure. So for, yeah, so like Sean, you know, like the folks that you- I won't with, be there, but yeah. No, I know, be but people there. like Brian, I know at Red Hat has yeah. probably dealt with a lot of these issues as well mm -hmm. as an example. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and so it might, be an interesting conversation because Open Euler, folks from Open Euler could kind of present this originally and just talk about their own particular context. But I also think it would be really like probably very clear points of connection for people from the audience to also speak to these particular issues as well. Yeah. So what about what about that? If we did kind of this one as the as the dash or dashboard, my goodness, as as the agenda. All right, thumbs up. How does that work for you, Yahui? I mean, except the Open Ruler uh, community. Do we have any other communities to may to 
to share their experiences about the community health evaluation? Well, I, I, I'm guessing the people in the audience will all be representatives of a whole variety of companies and communities who will be able to speak. You, typically in these, like, I, I think I've talked to Don about this, like, this is a very chatty group of people generally at OSS EU or OSS NA. They're usually very happy to to talk and contribute. And um, so my guess is, is that that if there was a presentation from the Open Euler community for maybe 20 minutes or something like that, and then just kind of an open discussion following that, mm -hmm. it would probably go a, a pretty long way. We would need somebody like like Georg to kind of um, facilitate. Yeah, facilitate that conversation so that it wasn't just, you know, we like following the Open Euler presentation, we could have small breakout sessions where people kind of thought about these in their own local context and reported back. Um, the, the other option is we try to, you know, we ask Brian if he would like to kind of speak to this as well from a Red Hat perspective. And he's also usually very amenable to, to, to speak about things as well. Um, so, you know, we could, we could propose to have Open Euler speak to this for, you know, 15 minutes and then have Brian speak to this from his context for about 15 minutes and then um, and then have people kind of break out into sessions and then kind of report back. That's usually pretty successful, but again, we'd need a facilitator. And I think it's okay too, if we have the room for two hours that we don't like go right to the end of the two hours, sometimes having kind of just people mingle at the end of that two hours is pretty nice as well, just to kind of have open discussions as people are walking around. Do we need to make a poster for this uh, for this chaos meeting? Because I I can I can ask ask people or my friends to create a new one. I bring it from China to to EU. Yeah, I mean, if if we have so, like a even just a like a digital poster or a real yeah. poster, real poster would be good too. But a digital one, because then we could, if it was around this. Um, and again, we can ask, I could ask Brian, um, but if it's around this or somebody, um, it would be a little bit easier for us to put it out on our channels as well, that there's a, an open event that you're invited to. Yeah. Where we're going to talk about these things. Um, yeah. All right. Does that help you, Hui? Yep, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, so maybe there might be a few, there's an action item to create a poster. Flyer over in this. How do you spell flyer wrong? How do you spell flyer? Is it F-L-I-E-R? <laughs> that's how I was going to spell it. So we're both wrong if that's wrong. It's not flyer? Maybe there is no E. I, I would have put a Y too. I think just, yeah, don't listen to <laughs> yeah. Seems really weird. Um, for the event, um, AI maybe reach. To another person. And um, do you know Yahui from who from Open Euler would maybe do that presentation? Uh, I can I can find someone. Okay. From Open Euler. Yeah. Okay, they could do like a fifteen minute presentation. It's just to give the ideas of what we want to talk about. Yep. And it would be about this. Okay. Uh, we will work on that. All right. We have three minutes to go through all of these things. So, <laughs> so.
So Somebody, I'll let's, let's, let's be quick. Time. No, this is great. I appreciate <laughs> this conversation because <laughs> actually OSS EU is coming up relatively very quickly. quickly. Yeah, it comes on fast. Um, all right. Well, I, maybe the one thing that we'll say is uh, business readiness of an open source project has been released. So you can click on that and it is up on the website. Um, Yuhui, I was going to put some some more some comments into this persona model because I'd like to get that out. Oh, that well, would be great. Thank you. Yep. yep. Um, I just these are my only comment was as I was going through this, like these are metric models, these three, the domain profile model, role profile model. They're they're a little bit different than our other metric models, just in terms of um mm -hmm. just like how I think about them. And so I just a little bit different. That's all. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit different from other, you know, the definition style. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm thinking that because I'm thinking, uh, we we may need some base model, like this contributor uh, personnel model. So, depend on this model, we can create more other things. Yep. So I don't know how to call that. Maybe we can call it a metric or or, or model. Yeah. It's... So exactly. Okay. So you under you're we're in the same spot. Like the naming yeah. of it is it just seems a little bit different than what we had been referring to as a metric model. Particularly like the things you were showing today. Like they're a yeah. little different than that. So I'll think through that as well. Uh, so and we can talk about that next time. Uh, and then next time we're still here. Uh, okay. Uh, well, we're at the end of time, so thank wow. you. Everybody. That was fast. It goes fast. You're having fun. <laughs> thank you. And yeah, well, really, pretty... really cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Show me uh, new toys, Yahoo! Every time. Now yeah. the pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's good to see everybody, and, and thanks for the feedback. And I think maybe what we'll be working on, like kind of immediately, more immediately, is this with OSS uh, EU. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. It's good to see you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Take Bye. care. Bye, all.